Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we are going to begin talking about reaction energy. So that is chapter 16 in the textbook. Um, so we'll begin with a definition of what we mean by thermochemistry. So the definition is thermochemistry is the study of the transfers of energy as heat that accompany chemical reactions and physical changes as well. And we've talked about this before, and we've discussed the fact that they're measured using typically a calorimeter. Um, and in class, in the past, we've used styrofoam calorimeters, and we've also discussed the more sophisticated calorimeters that people use. And this is an example of a so-called bomb calorimeter that um, is, again, very fancy, several containers within containers and a water bath. So a brief review of <clears throat> how we measure heat. Uh, the units that we measure heat and energy with are typically <clears throat> calories and joules. A calorie um, is specifically the quantity of heat uh, needed to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree C. And when we're talking about the calorie with a lower case C for calories, uh, we're referring to regular old garden variety calories as opposed to food calories. So one capital C calorie is equal to 1,000 lower case C calories, and that would be a food calorie with a capital C, and a food calorie is actually one kilocalorie. The SI unit for the uh, measurement of heat is the joule. Names named for James Prescott Joule, you'll recall, and converting between calories and joules, we say that one joule is 0.239 calories, or one calorie is equivalent to one uh, 4.184 joules. And you'll recall way back in long ago time, we measured specific heat back in chapter two, I want to say. Um, so how the quantity of heat is actually measured is typically the specific heat, which is defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree C. And the equation we used was Q equals mc delta t, where Q is the quantity of heat absorbed or released, m is the mass in grams, c is our specific heat capacity, or specific heat for short, and delta t is the temperature change always defined as T2 minus T1, or T final minus T initial. We rearrange that equation to solve for specific heat C as C equals Q over M delta T. And continuing on, we talked about the fact that water has a very high specific heat capacity compared with other things like metals that have very low specific heats. What does that mean? It's easy to raise the temperature of a metal because it has a low specific heat capacity. It's more difficult to change the temperature of water because it has a high specific heat capacity. So again, it takes way less energy to heat up a metal than it does a non-metal like water. That's why the beach is cooler in the summer, and that's why the sand gets so hot compared to the water. So in this chapter, we introduce the heat of reaction, and that is defined as the quantity of heat that's either released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. And so we refer to the heat content of a system as enthalpy, and that is H. And the enthalpy change, delta H, remember the delta sign is always for change. So the enthalpy change is the amount of heat either absorbed or lost by a system during a process, and in terms of a reaction, again, during the reaction process. So in terms of energy, we classify um, reactions as exothermic or endothermic, depending on whether they release energy or they absorb energy. And remember when we talked about uh, reactions and systems, we talk about whether energy is flowing from the system to the surroundings. That would be exothermic, so it would feel hot because energy is flowing out of the system to the surroundings. And in an endothermic reaction or process, energy is being absorbed into the system from the surroundings. 
So that leads us to something called a thermochemical equation. And that's an equation that includes the quantity of heat released or absorbed during the reaction. And again, it depends on the amounts of reactants and products. So in this case, if we look at the reaction for the formation of water, so the combustion of hydrogen, so the addition of oxygen to hydrogen results in water. This is all gas phase and it results in the release of energy. So I like to point out that here, if you'll notice that the energy is part of the product, meaning energy is produced. So that indicates that it is an exothermic process. Energy is produced. So in an exothermic reaction, energy is released from the surroundings. So energy is flowing from the system to the surroundings. The products have less energy than the reactants. Therefore, delta H is negative. So again, for this reaction, for uh, either the combination reaction of hydrogen combining with oxygen, or we could look at it as the combustion of hydrogen to produce water. Delta H is a negative number, negative 483.6 kilojoules, and that would be kilojoules per mole. And so here, this is our energy diagram that you saw couple times this year and you certainly saw it in biology class as well where this uh, the y-axis is energy and the x-axis could be thought of as time or the reaction coordinate and uh, here this line is representing the energy of the reactants remember that you have to climb an energy hill which is the so-called energy of activation in order for the reactants to have the correct energy and orientation to then combine and form products. And so then they fall down to products. So you'll notice the products are lower in energy than the reactants. So this change in the energy, the difference between the energy of the reactants and the products, that is our delta H for the reaction. And again, in an exothermic process, the products are clearly lower in energy than the reactants, so energy has been released. In an endothermic reaction, energy is absorbed from the surroundings, so it goes from the surroundings into the system. The products, therefore, have more energy than the reactants. The delta H is then positive. And again, if we're looking at the conversion of water in the gas phase, back to hydrogen and oxygen, our delta H is a positive number. And so we would write that again on the reactants side because you have to add the energy in. So when you think in terms of your energy coordinates and the energy of the system, in order for the reactants to make it up to the activated complex, energy has to be added in. And again, that means that the reactants are lower in energy than the products. So again, endothermic, the products have higher energy than the reactants. Energy must be added in in order to get that to take place. So how do we go about writing this thermochemical equation? So the thermochemical equation indicates the value of delta H within the reaction equation. As a result, it tells you whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So example for the reaction um, lead 2 chloride plus chlorine to produce lead 4 chloride, the delta H is 30.2 kilojoules. Now it's a positive number. That means that this is an endothermic reaction. So I'm going to have to indicate that by putting this delta H with the reactants. So writing that equation, I'm going to show you that now I've added my delta H here. I have to add that energy in in order for my reaction to produce products. So again, note that since delta H is positive, the reaction is endothermic and the delta H is written as a reactant. So now example two, this is the combustion of propane to produce carbon dioxide and water. The value of delta H, and you can look these up in tables, the value of delta H is a negative number. So that means that this is an exothermic reaction. So writing the thermochemical equation, I'm going to have to write my delta H as part of the products. So again, 
propane plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water and releases 2,043 kilojoules of energy. Note that since delta H is negative, the reaction is exothermic and delta H must be written as part of the product. So that is it for this part of the chapter. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.